Nobody's doing it. Nobody's doing breathing. Nobody's doing sounds. Sounds are simply happening. Hearing sounds are happening. The illusion is that you're hearing them. That there's someone here sitting here on a seat. And that that someone, that individual is hearing sounds happening. All of it is simply being, aliveness. Aliveness is a happening. And in that aliveness arises the idea that there is someone. The idea, I am a person, arises. That's absolutely perfect. It's fine. It's the game. It's not right or wrong. It's what happens. And when the individual arises, ownership happens. The idea, this is happening to me. I am the one that's breathing. I am the one that's hearing the sounds. I am the individual. I am the separate individual to whom life is happening. And in order to make me feel more comfortable, I I need to control that life. I need to find pleasure and avoid pain. That's the game. It's perfect. It's absolutely fine. It's aliveness happening. It's being, being. It's being, being a pretend person. It's oneness being two, pretending to be two. It's the game. But in that separation, there's a sense of loss. There's a sense of something that isn't whole. Often in, in being a person, that isn't noticed. There's hundreds and thousands and millions of people walking around the world not necessarily feeling as though there's anything missing all the time. Many of them are enjoying themselves, many of them aren't. But underneath all of that, there's a disquiet, a sense of something missing, a hole, like there's a hole. And in order to fill that hole, people do all sorts of things, like try to become rich or be good in relationships or become Christians or Buddhists or become balanced people like therapy is about becoming a very balanced sort of person who's totally accepting of everything and has worked through their block, emotional blocks and all that stuff. It's all a part of filling some sense of loss. Some, some feeling, some sense that there's something that isn't quite whole. Some secret hasn't been, is there but can't be seen. And so we fill ourselves with these things and one of the, the, one, um, one of the things we do with this hole is to try and fill it with something called enlightenment. People hear about something called enlightenment or liberation and they go, uh, they hear about somebody who teaches enlightenment so they think, feel this is another way I can, maybe this is the way that I can feel whole. Because this sounds like the ultimate whole filling activity. And so go to teachers and all through our lives we've always believed as individuals that, the, that effort brings results. So personal in, we live in a world of personal endeavour and we live in a world of, of anticipation. It's always going to be better tomorrow. And we go to people, uh, teachers, and most teachers, most apparent teachers and so-called masters, teach us as individuals that in order for that, uh, for wholeness to arrive or uh, enlightenment to arrive, we need to become something, like become very still or uh, drop the ego or whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. It's a long, it's usually quite a long list of things meditate, all those things. And again, what's happening is that somewhere the sense of the person is being reinforced all the time. Always it's about me. Everything is about me. I have to become rich. I have to be good at my job. I have to be a good lover. I have to become enlightened. In in a sense, right from the first moment of separation that first I thought, which arises at a very young age, then from that moment onwards, seeking begins. From the moment of separation from the whole, there is a seeker. There is no one that doesn't seek all the time that there's a person. So seeking happens. (coughs) 
And also at that moment, the I thought arises, the dreamer is created and built up through life. We become the dreamer in the dream called I am a person in the world. There is a world out there and I'm a person in it who has to negotiate with the world. So the function of that apparent person is to dream, only to dream. It's the dreamer. And we dream that we can become enlightened too. I, I, if I go to this master or that master, I can become an enlightened person. It's another part of the dream. Awakening is the realisation that there is no one. Awakening is awakening from the dream that there is someone. When the dream, the idea of there being someone drops away, when the seeker is no more, that which is sought becomes apparent. It doesn't come down from anywhere, it's all there is. What we seek is all there is. Everything. What we seek is, is what is everything. What we seek is aliveness, what I call radical aliveness, which is aliveness without there being anybody in it that's alive. It's just aliveness. It's like you're sitting on a seat, breathing is happening, sitting on a seat is happening, hearing this voice is happening, hearing sounds is happening. This is aliveness, this is being. It never came and it never went away. There's always been aliveness. And you could get up and run out of this room as quickly as you could to get away from aliveness and it would still be aliveness. You could resist everything and people do resist what's being suggested here. And resisting aliveness is also aliveness. Avoiding aliveness, avoiding being this is also being this. There's nothing which is not oneness, which is not aliveness. And in some way or other, the dreamer thinks they have to find aliveness, they have to find being, they have to find oneness or enlightenment. So they spend their time looking for enlightenment. That is also aliveness. There's nothing right or wrong with it. It's absolutely what it is. And then people hear, or come to realise, that what they're looking for, they can't find. There's a realisation with some people that they can't find what they're looking for and they don't even need to find it. And there's a dropping away of the idea that I am a separate person. And there is that which is sought. And that which is sought is being what is. This but breathing, sitting on a chair, being what is, liveness, being this. Absolutely simple and very, very ordinary. It's not about big events and becoming a great this or the other. It's simply about the absolute ordinariness of sitting on a chair. Then the miracle is that when you're sitting on a chair, you're still doing something in it. You're still looking, there's still a looking for something. You're not really sitting on the chair, you're waiting for the next moment. The miracle is when you are not, there is just sitting on a chair. And then wonder arises, childlike wonder of this. This is what we long for, the childlike wonder of this. The perfect lover, we meet the perfect lover who never left us, never left us and never will leave us. The constant lover, pure, timeless being. And then the game, what happens, instead of being a search for something, becomes a celebration. Awakening is simply the celebration of aliveness. So we can talk together about this. We can never describe liberation. We can never describe the wonder of this. But we can talk together and the words point to something that's beyond the words. In a sense, here it's possible to come to see that this is it, not that at the end of